Welcome home, Kenny. Unfortunately, you were the last to arrive home, so you need to prepare the adult beverage. Hi guys, so I'm going to get straight into it as there's quite a bit to be covered during the demonstration. At the moment, I am logged into a newly configured Blue Iris server. I've also taken my camera and to the uh, Wi-Fi network, so I'm ready to do the integration of that camera to Blue Iris. So uh, what you're having a look at right now is the Blue Iris, just a, a blank dashboard at the moment. I've installed the software on a just a spare Windows 10 machine that I had and this will essentially become my server that I'll be using to just run in the background as an NVR. So what we're going to be doing is adding a new camera. We then need to give our, um, our, our new camera some uh, descriptive names. As far as the type goes, I've got the network IP. As I said, this uh, camera has now been connected to the network and I've already got its IP address. Anyway, so we're going to go OK. Now, we do have the RSTP link, so in this case, I'm going to just go RSTP. And then uh, username and password, so I'm going to be putting in. And then I go OK. OK, so once we have saved that, we'll just give it a minute. OK, great. So the uh, camera is now responding as you can see so uh, let's move across to home assistant and uh, get that configuration completed right so what we're looking at is the configuration.yaml file i've already pasted the uh, lines that you're going to be needing to complete the integration so once that's done we can save it and we can restart Next, let's see if the integration has worked. So uh, the quickest way that I usually do that, I head over to the relevant tools. Then over there, we've got an idea of what the camera should be called. So in this case, it's more me. So as you can see, there immediately it's popped up. And uh, I usually just click on the more info. And there we go. So uh, let's head over to Blue Iris and uh, do some of the configuration for the AI integration. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a location for the files to be saved. So as you can see, you already have some in place. Let's go and choose another. I'm going to use auxiliary nine. So in my case, I will just store them on uh, pixel four. Okay. Right, and then I also just like to uh, change the retention just so that it doesn't take unnecessary space on the drive. I'll set that to 2 gigs and 5 days. Then we're going to head over to the web server. For the web server, there's a couple of changes that, need, that you can make, or if not, uh, you can just keep it as default. So the one that you'll notice is I've changed the port that I'm using. I think this is usually on port. 80 or 81 I'll just use something completely custom as you can see I don't have remote access set up of mine and then if you head over to advanced two more changes uh, required from I normally set that to uh, non LAN only and then I untick the use secure session keys and login page so we're gonna go okay there right then we're gonna head over to users so um, as you can see, I already have an AI user, but I'll just go through the uh, process anyway. So we're going to say we will call this user AI, give it a password. And then the only two settings that you will require over here will be your privileges need to be set to uh, administrator and your access times needs to be LAN only. Okay, that. That's pretty much what we need there. Then we're going to create the new camera. So if we go to add camera, we will just call the more me snap. That should be fine. What I'm going to do in this instance, because we already have the camera set up, just to help with the settings, I am going to go and select the same one. can do 
view immediately is go and set our motion trigger. So what we're going to do is go to trigger. We can enable motion sensor. Uh, so that's all good. We can also go and configure 312 usually. Just want to see it over here. Okay, so we should be good with that. Then what we're going to do is head over to record. As you can see, continuous has already been uh, selected, which is fine. Then this is where you specify your your snapshot folder. So in this case, we're selecting a J, the JPEG snapshot, and we'll go to auxiliary nine. Okay, and then we, what we'll do is head over to alerts, and under alert, alerts, I will change this to never. And that should do it. Right, so the uh, next two items that needs to be installed is the Deep Stack server and then uh, something called AI tool. I'm not going to cover this in uh, detail. If you have a look at our blog, uh, there is some links that will take you there. There's quite a good write up on both, uh, in, you know, together with instructions on how exactly to do the installation. Uh, but what I will do is just demonstrate roughly what you should be seeing once that has been completed successfully. What I will first show you is uh, just what to expect as far as deep stack goes. So once the installation is complete, it will supply you with a uh, local URL and port. The port is usually something that you would have specified during the uh, installation. So you should see something like this and it will confirm that deep stack has been activated. The next area we can have a look at is the AI tool itself. Cool, so if we go to the settings, the input path is essentially the, the snapshot path that we had created in Blue Iris, uh, which we will be specifying over here. The deep stack URL is obviously what I showed a bit earlier. As far as the cameras go, I uh, using use the uh, shortened name that was configured in Blue Iris again. Yeah. Then as far as relevant objects go, you have a choice. As you can see, there's different objects that you can go and select. In this case, there's a couple that I've just uh, selected to see if it will identify yes or no. Then confidence limits, I've pretty much just left as default. The cooldown time is something that was predefined as one minute. And then the trigger URL is the one that is obviously custom to your setup. So in this case, I've got the Blue Iris web URL over there. And then you can see there's some other parameters that basically includes the camera together with the username and password that you had configured. So all said and done, if it actually has been configured 100%, number one under under the overview, you can see that the service is running. You will also, as you just saw there, as, as images get uh, dropped into the folder, it will process them. And yeah, you can pretty much see the state uh, directly from the overview page. If you go to the history, you can actually see a summary of all the different images that has been processed up to this point. So uh, yeah, hopefully it's not a bad one, but let's just select one. So as you can see, Got a picture of me in front of the camera, got a red box around me, and then if you have a look at the bottom, it's, it says that it's 94% uh, sure that it is a person. If we go a little bit further down, let's have a look if there's any unrecognized items. Yeah, so we can see there's a false alert. Uh, okay, so I wasn't at the, the desk. You can see there in the top, uh, it has detected the light. Let's go a little bit further. Here's something relevant. Got it picking up as a laptop. Okay, it's a photo frame. And I mean, obviously, you can set the tolerances as far as that goes. Anyway, guys, I think that kind of wraps up what we need to do from a back end perspective. Let's uh, swiftly move into the Home Assistant section and get that facial recognition going. Right, so we are back in Home Assistant. What we're going to do is install the required integration. Then we will complete the configuration by the configuration.yaml file. And then we'll go through the process of essentially teaching the service facial recognition.
So next what we're going to do is go across to the Home Assistant Community Store. I'm going to go to Integrations. And in my case, I've already got it installed, but you can just add to the uh, repository. So what we're looking for is uh, DeepStack uh, Face Custom Integration. So you can go ahead and install that. And uh, once you've completed that, before you actually restart, let's head over to the configuration.yaml file. So I'm going to pop across to that now. So there's a couple of lines. Again, I will supply the um, information in the blog as well for you to copy and paste. So we're going to save that and then we will perform a restart. Once your home assistant has come back online, the, uh, the next thing that we need to do is have a quick look if it is picking up a new entity that we've added. So, so as you can see, it is over there. But at the moment, it has not detected anything. So you can see this is still sitting in an unknown state. So to get past that, what we need to do is basically teach it just to uh, identify a face at first. So uh, what we're going to be doing here is uh, going to services. And then under services, we will be pitch, or pitching a service called image processing scan as follows. And then we will specify the entity, which will be the deep stack face mill me demo uh, camera so the long name that I selected earlier and essentially when you call the service what it will be doing is it will be calling on the camera um, and taking some of those images and trying to process them so we're going to call the service we're going to give it a second but ultimately to see whether it has completed or not if we go back to states as you can see now it's changed from unknown to one and as you can see it's so it's already detected behind the desk because it was uh, uh, set up before okay so you know as we can see also from those the results you can see the confidence level is sitting at 72 percent it is possible to improve that uh, but before we do to uh, show you um, i'm going to navigate to the actual folder where it has output the actual image that it used to uh, to complete the identification and the integration i'll go there and i'll just quickly open that for you that is the image and if you had to enlarge it Sorry, I won't put you through too much agony in seeing that face. <laughs> but at the top, you can actually see that it says I identified it uh, as myself and, and the confidence level. So next, what we're going to do is teach the service to get that confidence level up. So that confidence level goes up and it's a little bit more accurate in identifying you for you know whatever uh, automations you want to create in it uh, at a later stage so in my case I've just taken a collection of uh, some pictures I've named it accordingly and uh, what I'm going to be doing is just pasting it in the folder that I specified uh, for the service earlier And uh, we're going to head back to Home Assistant and run a few commands just to see if we can improve on the level it was before. So let's head over here. So again, we're going to stay within the uh, developer tools, uh, navigate to services. Uh, then what we'll do is call up the DeepStack uh, Teach Face service. So in this case, I'll just start from uh, the first photo and work my way through to 16. So essentially what you do is uh, exactly paste it exactly like that. Also, just bear in mind that it is case sensitive. So if you spelt the name with a capital, just make sure that you do the same. Let's hit the call service. And we will just continue to do that, working through each. And obviously the idea with this is that 
the service is learning or facing different scenarios in this case so i've got people around me etc in, in some of the images let's let's see if it does improve i just went back to the service and if you have a look at the attributes you can see under confidence level it is now 80.6 so that that exercise definitely does assist with making the service a little bit more accurate can we make an automation out of this let's see as far as the automation goes i'm going to be borrowing from brad in the sense of setting it up via uh, codebed just to briefly take you through that what i've got is a state node that has been configured to essentially listen to the movement that is triggered on the camera if that is triggered it will then move into the image processing and then based on the result of the image processing so if it is unknown do nothing if it is someone that it detected which is normally represented by one it will then continue with the rest of the automation and in this case it will be in line with rory's challenge at the beginning of all of this which is letting me know that if i arrive last that i will have to be already be Welcome home, Kenny. Unfortunately, you were the last to arrive home, so you need to prepare the adult beverage. 